chat. I'm Maria and I'm very excited to share some chats with you every week with different LPJ players. This week I had the opportunity to talk to a player that was born in California. She now lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. She got on tour in 2011 and she's had some great successful years out on tour. So she qualified for this year's British Open that's played in Scotland, but unfortunately she had to stay home. So I wanted to catch up with her and see how she's doing and why she's home. So please follow along and listen to my chat with Ryan O'Toole. All right, so I want to say hi to Ryan O'Toole. That is, uh, where are you at? I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona at my home, so. Okay. And uh, what have you been up to? Um, well, I am on, what day, what is today? Friday? Yep. Or thir Friday, Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Thursday. So I'm on day f uh, six of quarantine. So. Um, okay, so it's... unfortunately, Ryan is one of the players that had to withdraw from British Open that's being played this week. Um, due to testing positive for uh, COVID. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that, how that kind of happened and how you found out and um, your feelings around it. So um, let's see. So I played the two Ohio events. I came back home. Um, and then a couple days after being home, my partner ended up not feeling well and ended up testing positive. I uh, went and got tested and ended up testing positive for COVID. So right then and there, I had to start isolating, self-isolate. Um, I went on, so that was Tuesday. On Wednesday, I went and tested. I was negative at that point. Um, and then it wasn't until, and I had to keep kind of testing every couple of days just to see where I was at. And it wasn't until Saturday that I tested positive. So it was kind of inevitable, I'd say. Um, but I already had to withdraw from the British. So whether you have exposure or test positive, they don't want you traveling because of that whole 14 day, um, yeah. incubation. So, um, you know, it was tough. It was tough, by, you know, realizing that I was exposed and then going, okay, well, I feel fine. What do I do? I mean, I had to tell the tour. I had to be up front with it. You know, last thing you want to do is fly over to Scotland, subject anybody, subject my caddy, be stuck there for 14 days in an event you test positive. Um, yeah. You know, the way our tour does it is, uh, so they, so we have Arkansas coming up. So what you do is you test in the week prior to that event, okay. um, if you're home. So they send you a test at home, a saliva test. You do a Zoom call with a nurse and they watch you spit into this thing and then you send it in. Um, when that comes back negative, then you get to travel to the event. And then within the first two days of being on site, then you have to test again. Okay, okay. So you feel it's a, it's a good, good way of testing and finding out uh, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, I had tested four times prior to coming home. So, you know, it's just interesting, you know, not really knowing where you can pick it up from. Like, to be honest, we still don't really know where um, it, it, we got it or, you know, okay. whatnot. Um, you yeah. know, having that 14 day incubation period is kind of, you know, leaves a big trail of <laughs> where could you have gotten it. Yes, yes, for sure. So, um, so how do you occupy your time now when you're oh. Well, you know, I, trust me, it's hard. It's like, um, you know, you, one of the things is, is like you think about, you know, say you have a normal cold or you barely, you barely feel sick or anything like that. You, you, we all go out. Like we all would go practice. We would go to an event. I would, you know, if I was sick, I'd go tough it out being sick yeah. with this. Like you are completely locked down. Like you can't go anywhere. You have to have people come deliver you food. Um, so it's just different. Um, you know, even if you don't feel bad, you still are stuck to home. So I've been putting on a ruler at home, on uh, training aids at home. I bought an I bought a net at PJ Superstore, had it delivered. Okay. Um, it's been hitting balls in my backyard. So you know, Arizona never shut down the golf courses, so I never really had to experience what COVID was. You know, back in March, April, and May, where and some have, people. You have a gym at home as well, too, right? And I have a gym at home. Yes. Yeah, so. I literally have been working out in there, um, walking on the treadmill, reading a book. I, I hate to read, but I started reading a book called Manifest Now. So okay. I've been, uh, which I really like, you know, it's some um, good mental book. Uh, so I've been trying to just work on that. And 
uh, doing whatever I can at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So, so, so you first came out on tour in um, 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, being there, you got uh, picked as a rookie for Solheim Cup. Yeah, you were on the European team. <laughs> I was on the European team. Yeah. Yeah. So how was that feeling getting picked for the Solheim as a, as a rookie, especially? Um, you know, there was a lot of controversy when I got picked as a rookie, you know, only had a couple of events under my belt at the time. Um, but it felt really good. It was really nice to, you know, have, um, that ability to compete for my country, as you know, uh, not too often do we really get to do that. And especially like in America, yeah. we're just so big. It just, it's, I feel like Europeans get more of that feel than we do here. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was just, it was fun. It was fun competing as a team. It was fun um, wearing the red, white, and blue. Yeah. Uh, although we didn't win, <laughs> but it, it, you know, I yeah. felt like it was the experience I I will never forget. Right, right, right. And that's something that you thrive towards to try to get into again. Uh, yes, very much so. Um, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been able to play in it, but you know, there is one coming up next year, so I would love to have that opportunity again to play in it. Yeah. Um, and. I think, yeah, it's at Inverness, so mm. on, look, you know, U.S. soil, so that would be nice. Yeah, 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 for sure. And uh, 2011, you were also on Big Break, is that correct? 2010, I was on Big Break, so before I had my LPGA status, I did Big Break in 2010, um, so that was the year that I got my tour card on some on Symmetra. Yeah, yeah, what was that experience like? Um, you know, that was fun. It was two weeks of filming. Um, definitely, they run you to the wire, you know, you're filming literally from 5 a.m. to midnight every day. Um, and it, it's just, it's a different experience. They've actually replayed it during, I think, this whole, like, COVID thing months yeah. ago. I remember and, that's why I was thinking of you as well. I'm like, oh, yeah, she was on it, and she was on it, and you totally forget who was on it. It was so weird. It was, a fl you know, literally a flash in the past. Uh, yeah. It was funny watching myself or listening to myself talk, and I'm just like, wow things have changed. I mean, it was 10 years ago, so. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah sure. Um, but do, they, do they portray, portray players in different ways because it's TV and they want certain personalities to show up or something? Oh, 100%. Like, they always, um, they definitely try to play into whatever, you know, kind of characteristic or personality you gave them. So, like, whether you gave them competitive, whether you gave them, like, this bitchy side or, you know, or prissy side or whatever it was or serious but they kind of wanted to pull a character out of everybody so that they could at least have drama um okay. you know like I said you were filming all day anyways that they just ran you to the bone so yeah. it was interesting as the week progressed to see some players get tired and watch it come out and you're like Whew. <laughs> <laughs> they usually wouldn't be like that but yeah, yeah. but it was a fun experience and something that you kind of enjoyed oh 100%. Yeah. And it, it, you know, one thing it did is it taught you how to um, talk on camera, you know, all the interviews that we did every night, you know, um, you know, how to dodge questions, how to answer questions correctly, because I mean, they would ask you the same question five different times, right. in five different ways. So like, they wanted <laughs> answers out of you. So it taught you how to kind of, you know, be aware of, okay, what is, what are they trying to pull from you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh I guess it's something fun with something, everything that comes out. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I would, you know, I wouldn't, I would, you know, if someone asked me back then to do it again, I would do it again. So it was fun. Yeah. 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 Um, so 2018, that was your best year on tour so far? Yeah. I think 2018 and 2011 and 2018 were probably my two best years. Okay. And 11, 16 and 18, I think. Um, what do you put that to? Why, why, well, so what do, why do you think the fears were good? Like, I don't know. Like, if you look at, we could go to a stat basis, right? And we can look at, okay, you know, out of all, the, out of all your stats that you collect, putting, fairways, greens, um, scoring average, all that, you know, I would have to say that the one driving accuracy, driving distance, um, the one thing that those, all those years have in common are A, driving distance, and B, greens and regulation. Okay. Both, all three of those years had higher driving distance, and all three of those years had high greens and regulation. Okay. okay. So, you know, you can say, obviously, the further you hit, and as you know, you're a long ball hitter. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, hitting, you know, having 
driving distance being 10, 10 to 15 yard difference, say you change drivers one year yeah. and you're not hitting it as far. Yeah. Well, you know, just that 10, 15 yards is huge. And then, you know, that's club and a half difference into every green. Yeah. Yeah. And do you find uh, today, I mean, obviously I haven't been out there for a few years, but you find that um, most girls hit it further. Is that due to um, workouts or is it due to technology or what do you feel uh, or is it a change? Do you see it, people hitting it further or not? Uh, you know, I do, I do see people hitting it further. Um, I think, uh, I think men's and women's tour, we see both yeah. that, you know, equipment is just going further. I think, uh, I think people are evolving to also, I think, um, the act the general golfer, professional golfer is becoming a longer hitter. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, is that contributed to work ethic, um, workouts, um, swing mechanics? I, I mean, I would say yes. And I also just say, in general, I think the stature of the golfer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, you know, a lot of girls are tall now. Right. There's, a, there's quite a few tall girls out there. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they choose golf instead of tennis, which is, you know, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have to say that, um, I mean, not, I don't, I feel like not too many top girls, you know, there's no more dinkers anymore. There's no more girls that can get away with, you know, hitting it only 240, okay. 250. You know, I really think um, even the, you know, girls might not carry it as far, but the balls are, you know, they're definitely getting advantage with the run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've um, obviously, as long as I've known you, always been into fitness and health and all yeah. that. How did you get into that? When did that start? Or was it like later in your life or was it when you were young? Really? I think it was when I was pretty young. I mean, I played a lot of sports growing up. I was big into softball and basketball. Um, those are my other two team sports that I'd played, you know, amongst other things, karate and surfing and stuff like that. But, um, you know, when I started getting into golf, I kind of was like, okay, well, what, you know, it's not physical. Like there's not, you know, you're not going to basketball practice and running suicides and doing drills and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, my parents were good about, hey, like, why don't we get you into the gym a couple days a week? We'll get you a trainer. Um, and started out with just a local trainer at a local gym. And then eventually it progressed to, you know, more golf specific trainers, um, you know, Janet Alexander down in San Diego. Yeah. Um, and then uh, from her to Andrea mm -hmm. shape and sport. Yeah. Um, and then now I'm over with PFS. Right. So Greg here. Um, and, you know, it's just, um, you know, all, all three of those people still, you know, they're all great instructors. Um, you know, sometimes it's just where I live, anything like that, um, change. But, um, you know, I really think that, as you know, you trained, yeah. um, you yeah, know, yeah. golf specific training or training in general is just overwhelming. I think it's good all around. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, you know, I've, I've started like a plant-based diet. Um, since, Did you? Since January. Yeah. I only eat like okay. fish and seafood. That's it. I haven't had meat since since then and it's it's just a great I feel great about it and it's um right. you know, to me a, a big difference um because there's so there's so many options and whatever there's so many yeah, options yeah so many options and whatever fit, fits everybody um but I wanted to try it and see what it's like and you know I do believe uh people are different I think everybody's made differently I think everybody requires something a little different um but I do believe that exercise is something that is needed for everybody. I think that's one reason why I stay very much injury free. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I can continue doing what I do. Um, I just think, you know, listening to your body, as you know, and, you know, giving it what it needs and eating correctly and stretching and exercise and stuff like that does help in yeah. longevity. Right. So when you're out on the road, what do you feel? Because it can be hard to eat good when you're out on the road. Yes, you know. The big places you go to or things that you bring along that you feel this is what I really need. So, um, you know, one thing I did notice, so uh, obviously we've never had this much time at home. Right. Um, you know, in how many years of our lives that I've never, I'm, I have never had months at home. It, used, it went from being like, man, I haven't had two weeks at home and I can't tell you how long to yeah. now I'm like, wow. I haven't traveled and I can't tell you how long. So to see what being at home and eating at home did first, um, what 
the travel and eating out all the time, even the stress of travel, traveling in on a plane, uh, in competition, what that had did to my body versus, you know, living a more simple life yep. and eating at home was night and day different. The, you know, the stress on the body, the cortisol levels, the, um, just the inflammation, the stuff that you eat when you go out, the, what that food kind of does to you. Yeah. It tastes great. I'm a big foodie. I love eating out, but, um, you know, it's different than eating at home. Like it is much more healthy to eat at home. Yes, no, it is. It is. So on the road is tough. Choose your snacks wisely. Um, you know, I think we go for convenience with bars and anything that's already processed. It's really hard to remind yourself, hey, get veggies as a snack. Hey, check the ingredients of your, um, uh, of your what do I call uh, beef jerky, you know, like avoid the soy products, avoid, look at look, one of the top ingredients in your beef jerky is sugar. People right. don't realize that. So really look at the labels and go, what am I putting in my body? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is just an interest that you have picked up and you find fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely a, a, a wormhole that just feels like it's never ending. Um, I worked with a nutritionist. I've been working with one for the last, uh, year and a half and you know it's just interesting to really find out like you know what is good and what it's hard yeah. to you know be diligent it's hard to be perfect and it'll drive you crazy so you just just try to do as good as you can I think yeah otherwise you won't enjoy life no it's like I mean sometimes you have to enjoy it as well or whatever so um, very much sometimes you got to give yourself a little break but um but overall like you say being being healthy, working out is, you know, on the bottom line for, for a lot of things. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're still working with, um, with Joe? No, I've been with Jorge Parada for, um, Oh, sorry. That's what I meant. Sorry. Six, six years. Yeah. yeah. Six years, Jorge. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, he's, a, he's at Liberty National. Um, but you know, would comes out here quite often uh besides during this COVID thing other than that yeah he would come and work otherwise you see him on the road yeah quite a bit and you so. um, um obviously when he's out there he will be with you um face to face but then otherwise mm -hmm. you do um virtual um lessons oh yeah so i could send him video like i even send him video of me swinging into my net here <laughs> so, you know hey what can i work on give me something bored yeah. um <laughs> Or does this look good? Uh, but yeah, he's always, you know, there for help. Um, you know, so whether if I'm not in person or a lot, even during COVID, like it was great. I just put my earbuds in and would FaceTime him, set a tripod up and he'd watch me hit for an hour. Okay. Okay. So, okay. And he, you know, and then he'd stop and say, hey, send me a couple of swings. Let me relook at him and then call me back. Okay. And so. come out on the road a lot when you... When yeah, he comes out uh, usually, you know gets in Sunday night, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then takes off by the time okay. Wednesday night, so, yeah. And then with the COVID, are coaches allowed to be out there? Uh, yeah, so coaches are allowed to be out there, but they can only be on the driving range, no golf course. They have to be outside the ropes if they're on the golf course. No putting green, no chipping area. It's very bizarre. Okay, okay. so not really that much that they, they can have. No, just yeah. driving range. It doesn't make sense, but we're going <laughs> with it. Yeah, well, if everybody follows those rules, then, you know, that's what you have to do. It is, exactly. Yeah. So at least it's there for something, you know, get some work done. But um, like I, I said, it's a strange time. We're just making the most of it. Yeah, yeah, that's all you can do. And I guess there's no point being negative about it because everybody goes through it. And we just have to look forward and hopefully we'll all we'll come out of this um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when are you playing next? Um, hopefully Arkansas. So as of right now, the plan is Arkansas. It's a Friday start. I should be clear from this uh, Monday or Tuesday. So, so you I can travel up there and do the next test up there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll have to send one in here. Most likely both of those are all going to be na uh, positives. You know, there's this whole, they don't really know like when this, you'll stop testing positive, but as long as you show no symptoms, you are considered. You're good to go. Clear. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Um, yeah, so I just have um, like quick, quick six questions or so. That All I right. Come up with an answer, whatever um, comes to your mind. So, uh, what's your favorite food? Sushi. Uh, what's your favorite drink? 
Well, what kind of drink? Uh, jasmine green tea. <laughs> Uh, favorite travel destination? Ooh. Hawaii right now. Uh, what's your favorite movie or TV series? TV series is constantly changing just because I'm always looking for something new. Um, I, favorite movie? Ooh, that's a tough one. Blue Crush. I've never heard of that, but I'll look it up. The surf. <laughs> it's really a pointless, mindless movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what's your favorite word? Favorite word? Gosh, I don't know. I feel like someone else could answer that for me. <laughs> I got no from the peanut gallery over here. Oh. A favorite word that you like to hear or a word that you think sounds nice or soft or mm. just a word that you think that is a nice word. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. What's your non-favorite word? Mm. <laughs> Does this have to be completely PG? Yeah, really. <laughs> My favorite non-word is anything descriptive of going number two. Oh. I don't like any of that. <laughs> that is like a no-no. Someone has to say some, those words like that, I cringe. Okay, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that's what I had for now. Perfect. Yeah, so it was really nice talking to you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, let me know if you guys, if you need anything else. Um, I'm stoked that you, you know you and your husband are doing this and. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Absolutely. Yeah, we're just starting out and. Is he is he still coaching, teaching? Uh, he is. Um, no, he's not. He um, uh, is actually um, do, like working with this as well. So obviously, okay. with this, um, he's he's going to do more of a. Uh, on course preparation. Oh, so nice. Okay. Players to prepare for a tournament and um, making them ready, being ready when they warm up and, um, and things like that. So that's that's good. Be, yeah, yeah, because it's we are at and trying to get ourselves out there and it doesn't have to be with technique, you know. Um, mm -hmm. so that's good. I mean, there's definitely a market there, especially for like the young generation coming up. Like, there's so many kids that just never know what, you know, you kind of learn 10, you know, through 10 years of being out and doing it. And, you know, him being, you know, on the PGA side and on the bag for so long. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, we think it's a lot to to learn to, to people and, and kids and, you know, the juniors, the college players, whatever it is. And and even others that we, we think we can help them out with um, ways of preparing and mentoring and, and see, where, uh, see where that takes us. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, all, all right. the best. And yeah, thanks thank again you. for having me. Yeah. No, um, appreciate it. Hopefully I get to talk to you again soon. You might go out and win Arkansas and I will uh, talk to you again. Hey, okay, that'd be great. Let's plan on it. All right. Well, good all luck right. with everything and uh, feel, um, hopefully you feel better soon. All right. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. All right, bye. bye.